So, uh, good day, everyone. So, this is the satellite communications lecture, uh, EE four thirty one. So, uh, I'm Vishaka Basnaika, and I hope to uh deliver this lecture. So, the aim of this module uh is to obtain knowledge about satellite communications and design satellite based solutions for different um customer needs uh, so when we talk about the uh the satellite communications i think it's a really interesting area to study uh where we talk about satellites orbiting around the earth so uh, we have uh satellites and we have uh, orbits along which they are traveling uh, and then we uh, talk about the ground stations that are placed in the earth and um, help us to obtain signals uh, from the satellites and uh, uh, obtain information from distance, distant points on the globe. Uh, so uh, satellite communications is uh, useful for us to improve the connectivity uh, between, uh, between distant points in the earth and increase the connectivity in areas which are harder to be reached uh, using the conventional uh, network infrastructures available uh, currently in the world, uh, such as cellular infrastructure, uh, then optical based or like fiber uh, networks. Uh, so satellite communications are important uh, in such manner uh so that we uh we uh, we rec we need to learn and we need to apply it uh for our uh needs uh in uh communicating so i think uh i would like to uh discuss about uh, satellite communications uh uh i mean and uh, use simulating softwares to uh, understand about the concepts uh, related to satellite communications. So we'll be learning about uh, satellites and uh, uh, the key components of satellite communications uh, in our uh, module. So uh, basically, uh, uh, when we talk about the key components, uh, there are mainly three components that uh, constitute uh, uh, can constitute uh, satellite communication. So uh, basically, those three are satellites, ground stations, communication links. So when we talk about satellites, we have different types of satellites. Uh, so uh, the satellite is depending uh, based on the application and the satellites are orbiting in a certain orbit. So these orbits are predefined and the satellites will follow that certain orbit. Apart from that, the ground stations, when we talk about the ground stations, there are specified ground stations which are located on the earth and that will constitute uh, continuously uh, communicate with the satellite. Uh, so at the ground stations, we have transmitter receive antennas and uh, those uh, antennas will be used to uh, receive and uh, transmit signals uh, between the satellite. Uh, and uh, uh, so uh, the ground stations are useful for us to connect with the satellite. Uh, so uh, when we connect like that, we need to establish a communication link between the Earth station and the satellite. So in that case, we need to consider about uplink and downlink communications. So in uplink communications, we will use a certain frequency and uh, in the downlink communication, we will use another, maybe a different frequency to uh, communicate. So uh, uplink and downlink uh, frequency bands are standard uh, frequency bands defined by, uh, I mean, uh, telecom, uh, organizations so uh, people uh, use those defined frequencies to uh, communicate in the uplink and downlink right so apart from knowing the key components of the satellite communications we will also um, assess 
the requirements of satellite communication systems. So what are the requirements of satellite communication systems? What are the performance that we expect from communication uh, in satellite uh, systems? Apart from that, uh, uh, thirdly, we will be uh, evaluating technologies that are required for us to uh, establish a communicate satellite communication system and um, and uh, like maintain it with uh, uh, with a really good performance. So uh, we need reliable communication between the ground station and the satellites. So in order to achieve that, we need uh, like uh, high uh, data rates uh, and also we need uh, lesser outage happening in the communication and lesser uh, like error rates in the transmitted uh, data packets. Uh, so, um, so in order to achieve such performance, we need to uh, incorporate different technologies that are there in the world uh, today uh, in order to ensure uh, like uh, reliable information transfer and uh, lesser error in the information that we receive uh, and also achieve high data rates such that people can experience um, high uh, internet connectivity and obtain information at a faster rate. So apart from that, fourthly, uh, we will be designing satellite communication systems for different uh, like scenarios and we will be uh, like assessing the performance of that uh, communication using our simulations. So that is basically regarding the uh, key uh, key uh, like uh, learning outcomes of this module. Uh, when we talk about the module assessments and assignments and exams, uh, basically we will be having, uh, uh, basically we, when we talk about assignments and uh, exams, we will be having uh, a 30 percent of 30 percent of assignments and exams we will have 70 percent of uh, i mean 70 percent of uh, co i mean uh, contribution from the exams to the final grade so uh, the assignments uh, will be based on numerical simulations basically with related to matlab matlab uh, uh, i mean uh, satellite matlab uh, satellite based uh, like tools. So numerical simulations done using MATLAB will be uh, done as assignments during this course. Uh, also, uh, we will have some quizzes during the classes. So those quizzes will be uh, sometimes unannounced. Uh, then uh, when we talk about the uh, MATLAB simulations, as I mentioned, uh, so MATLAB simulation is are really, uh, you know, like uh, important for us and uh, like the uh, MATLAB interface provide us toolbox to enable uh, learning about satellite communications. So this uh, uh, like code is uh, about using uh, like satellite communication toolbox and the related functions that are available in that toolbox. Uh, so uh, we can use this toolbox to uh, design and simulate satellite communication systems. Uh, the, Toolbox offers various functions, algorithms, models that enable users to perform link uh, budget analysis, uh, channel modeling, modulation and coding uh, uh, schemes, and error correction coding, and satellite simulations. So uh, the toolbox allow us to, uh, I mean, uh, do analysis regarding the link budget, uh, channel model, uh, the coding uh, modulation and coding schemes and error correction coding, and then si and simulate the uh, satellite communication system. So I think MATLAB is a good uh, tool that uh, help us to uh, 
visualize the satellite communication and uh, do the simulations. So uh, as I showed before, the visual graphic that is available in uh, like MATLAB allow us to see visually our, uh, I mean, uh, the the impact of our simulations and see exactly where the satellites are placed and what is the what is their orbit and other related uh, parameters so uh, so if you uh, have if you have familiarity with matlab matlab works with uh, basically vectors and matrices so uh, in uh, matlab we can uh, observe that we have a section called workspace. In that workspace, we have the ability to go into each of the parameters that are defined in the code and see the values of uh, the variables. Uh, so uh, when we talk about the satellite uh, toolbox and this code that is based on that, uh, we have uh, like different objects that we define uh, for uh, building the satellite scenario. So, uh, for example, uh, we have uh, we have uh, different uh, like uh, functions that are defining satellite scenarios. So, these functions uh, are defined by the toolbox itself, and uh, we can learn about these functions by uh, going into the help. Uh, help uh, section or else uh, looking at the documentation related to that. So, uh, for, so first of all, I mean, in order to start with the satellite communication toolbox, you need to type uh, like doc satcom in the command window. Once you type that, you will be able to go to the MATLAB documentation page. Uh, which has the uh, basic uh, like uh, content related to uh, uh, satellite communications. So in this uh, section, we can see uh, like different uh, uh, like basic uh, knowledge about basic data regarding this like uh, the satellite communication uh, toolbox and the functions that are available. Uh, and then we can see some examples uh, given in here. We can open these examples in our MATLAB editor and we can try out uh, by running those scripts and uh, seeing the output of the um, output of the code in a uh, visual manner uh, given in here. We can observe how the satellites are placed around the globe and where the ground stations are placed in the earth. And then we can also do some, you know, changes in the parameters and we can see how it affects the uh, final, uh, you know, like satellite communication system. Anyway, like the options or the functions available on the satellite toolbox are available in this documentation file. So if you have any uh, like doubt or if you want any help regarding any specific function, that also can be searched. So basically, if you want to learn about, for example, let's say you want to learn about the satellite scenario function, you can, uh, you know, type help and you can just type uh, like satellite scenario, you will get an error, but you can learn from uh, error means you will get a message saying, okay, you need to learn, uh, no, anyway, I think we have got it. Sometimes we need to define like what is the toolbox that we want to, uh, want to uh, access and uh, access and learn about i mean so i think i will go up like this so i have typed help satellite scenario so it says like satellite scenario and it creates satellite scenario by default uh, so we need to define the start time stop time and the sample time values so uh, start time is the time that we start the 
like simulation of the satellite system and then stop time is the stopping time and then the sample time is the sample time that the scenario the simulation uh, software will give us data if we have a higher sampling time then uh, i mean lower sampling time then we, we will get data frequently from the simulation software and then we have satellites satellites is a uh, uh, satellite is a vector of satellites and i mean uh, it is uh, it is giving us uh, basically a vector about the satellites that we uh, that we define in our system so uh, likewise we can go into each of those variables and we can look how they are defined and uh, also we can go to the workspace here and easily see how those vectors and uh, vectors are defined right so sat there's a vector called sat in the uh, you can see it is like an object in programming languages so we can go to sat and you can see uh, each of the satellites are defined as an object in here so separately you can click on the satellites and you can see their information so for each satellite there's information satellite one likewise there are some information regarding each satellite and then we have second satellite and about that satellite uh, the information is given separately like this then third satellite likewise we can see how each satellite is defined and how what are the parameters that define them so there's also a parameter called orbit you can go to orbit and you can see like what are the parameters that define the orbit uh, then ground track so in there also like the these parameters define the ground track so uh, in order to like do any changes uh, to the ground track we need to define the lead time the trail time likewise we need to define those values so uh, that is uh, simply the way to find out uh, the information regarding each of the uh, satellite satellites using this uh, MATLAB environment, right? So you can learn about it uh, by going uh, into the uh, like uh, into the documentation that I mentioned before, right? You can go to help satcom or docs.com and go and uh, open up an example and run each of the uh, sections and you can uh, go and you can uh, go into each of the variables that are mentioned or, and functions that are mentioned and you can uh, see like how the functions are defined and uh, then uh, when you have a certain output you can observe the uh, in, uh, the contents of that output in the workspace when you once you go to the uh, for example in this uh, line uh, it is mentioned element one equals orbital elements of satellite one that means like uh, in this code it says like all the uh, orbital information regarding satellite one are included in the uh, parameter or the variable called e e l e1 right so if i want to know about the e l e1 a bit more further i can see it in here right i can see it in here as well right so once i uh, do not put the semicolon in here at this uh, line in the at the end of the line i can see the output i can see the output that the element one is uh is a set of values uh regarding the satellite's orbit so uh, element one gives the value of mean motion eccentricity inclination right accession of ascending node argument of periapsis mean anomaly period epoch b star 
likewise uh, parameters related to satellite communications right so these parameters define the orbit of the satellite uh, uh, revolving around right so uh, the orbit uh, of the satellite uh, i mean of the satellite uh, is defined by the velocity at which the satellite is moving in the orbit and likewise these other parameters define the uh, different uh, parameters of the uh, satellite moving in the uh, orbit right so i hope uh, it is a little bit clear to you so uh, likewise we will be uh, learning about uh, the each parameters and uh, how we can uh, customize that parameter for our specific uh, scenario right so now let's get back into like some uh, the whiteboard and i will like uh, try to uh, like share some uh, like uh, basic uh, concepts related to satellite communications right so we will uh, i think learn theory and uh, try to do the simulations uh, like in parallel so that we can gain uh, information regarding both the theory and the simulations uh, at the same time so when we talk about uh, satellite communications, uh, so uh, like we can basically uh, have three components, as I said before, uh, the uh, satellite, I mean, one thing is the ground station. The ground station is situated on the ground and uh, it is uh, communicating with the satellite. So we have the satellite dish that uh, that that can that directs the signal towards the satellite in here we have the uh, uh, the uh, uh, the uh, the section where we can where we send the signal to the space so we have a converging point of signals in this uh, uh, focal point and then we have the ability to like generate the signal from this point and transmit the signal to the space so depending on the location of the satellite uh, the angle of transmitting will be determined by the the this uh, ground station so after determining the angle at which the signal should be transmitted the signal will be trans transmitted to this dish and then that dish will reflect it towards the satellite. Uh, the satellite will receive the signal uh, and uh, the satellite also need to receive the signal in the uh, best uh, angle and in the best direction. So the satellite will also have the receiving antenna and uh, uh, transmitting antenna so basically in most of the time the transmitting and receiving antenna are separate in the uh, satellite so there will be separate antenna to re receive the signals uh, from the ground stations there will be antenna to receive the uh, signals from the ground station <laughs> so the antenna sorry the satellite will uh, will uh, will process the signal that it received inside uh, a component called the transponder and uh, it will amplify the signal up to a certain level and then it will retransmit it back to the receiving end of the uh, signal. So the receiver will also be uh, a ground station and the receiver will uh, <clears throat> obtain the data using another ground station uh, where the uh, data will be, uh, signal will be received using this satellite dish, for example. And uh, this uh, satellite dish will process the data and decode the data that is received. So uh, basically, uh, Therefore, like we have the ground station, 
ground station then uh, satellite satellite then we have the communication link so communication link uh, consists of the uplink and the downlink okay so uplink and downlink and then as i said before there's a certain standard frequency that will be used for uplink communications and a standard frequency used for downlink communications in general that is uh, you that is the practice uh, so apart from that uh, when we are doing uh, these communications we need to consider about the frequency of transmission so uh, basically for uh, like uh, satellite communications uh, where we communicate directly with the satellite and the satellite uh, transmits back to a ground station we uh, de we deploy the waves at a frequency which is above uh, above 40 megahertz right so uh, for for wave for wave propagation for wave propagation in the space for wave propagation in the space we use frequencies of above uh, of above 40 megahertz in general and uh, these space uh, wave uh, propagation is generally known as space wave propagation. Okay, and this uh, space wave propagation is, as I mentioned before, is useful for communication between di distant points on the globe. Okay, so basically uh, that is regarding space wave communications uh, which involve the satellites, right? Uh, so uh, the frequency is a, a important factor uh, when we consider about the satellite communication uh, and also another important thing is the maintaining of the line of sight with the uh, between the uh, satellite and the ground station okay so it is uh, necessary for for us to maintain line of sight communication so like uh, uh, only at that moment we will be able to have really uh, good and reliable communication between the transmitter and receiver so for satellite communications to happen, we need to make sure that the, we use the correct frequency and we maintain the line of sight between the satellite and the uh, receiving ground station. So between uh, the transmitter and receiver, right? We need to maintain the uh, line of sight, line of sight between uh, the transmitter and the receiver in order to have a reliable communication in the satellite uh, in the satellite link uh, then we also need to transmit with the sufficient transmission power and uh, we also need to deploy the signal uh, and transmit the signal in the correct angle we need to we need to be careful about the transmission angle. So if we uh, satisfy all these conditions, we'll be able to uh, obtain a reliable satellite link uh, with the satellite in the space. So 
we need to like learn about these parameters a little bit more. So one of the most important things to remember is that uh, for satellite communications, we need line of sight, line of sight uh, communication. So line of sight communication, achieving that line of sight is a little bit, uh, you know, like challenging at times. And therefore, in order to achieve the line of sight, we need to uh, place our transmitters in specific places uh, in a good uh, uh, and a suitable uh, location in the environment such that we can maintain line of sight connection with directly with the satellite. Okay, so I hope uh, you obtain some information and uh, I would like to continue the lecture uh, with the rest of the content from the next class onwards. So thank you so much for listening in.